Hello, it's Jamie here. Thanks for checking out my latest emulation video. So before I start this video, I just want to say thanks for watching it and uh, thanks for all my subscribers, you know, tuning in to watch my latest emulation videos. I do a range of different videos on my channel, music, tuition, obviously emulation, tuition, gameplay and modern games, so everything. So I need your support to upgrade the channel, as it were. I need new microphones, I need new backdrops, I can't keep going on using this. So I need a lot of stuff to enhance my channel to make it so much better. But anyway, uh, check out links in my description and enjoy the video. Take care. Today we're looking at Dolphin. Uh, so Dolphin Emulator supports GameCube and Wii games. Uh, it's been around for quite some time now, probably 12 to 13 years I'd say. And it's only in the last couple of years it's become very stable with a lot of games. So uh, let's just crack on with this. So if I just open up my web browser, I use Google Chrome. Uh, if you just type in to your search bar Dolphin Emulator, it will be your first result. So let's click on that. Now, uh, Dolphin Emulator, as it says on screen here, it will also support Mac and Linux. Uh, don't have any um, knowledge of this not being the same process with Mac and Linux. I'm guessing it would be. I would say if you happen to be running a Linux operating system, then uh, Dolphin will likely run a lot faster than your average PC. Uh, Mac, I'm guessing, would run the same as Windows, but I'm no expert with Mac, so let's just go ahead and download this. So click on that, and we want our latest, which was uploaded by the developers uh, one month ago, which is 5.0 stroke 18498. So we got two options here. Actually, we got a few options. So uh, you can also run this on Android. Uh, Mac OS, like I was just saying, um, said R, ARM uh, CPUs. Uh, we also got Windows ARM 64. So ARM is actually uh, kind of like a mini processor. Uh, something like a Raspberry Pi would run um, ARM CPUs. Uh, so for this tutorial, I'm going to get right into Windows time 64. Uh, Times 64 is just telling you that you need a 64-bit operating system to run this. Uh, we're living in the era nowadays of 64-bit processors. I think 32-bit is kind of uh, steadily disappearing with time. So let's just click on Windows Times 64 and download this RAR file. Now, if you don't understand RAR files or zip files, um, I recommend you look for a separate tutorial. Uh, but what a RAR file is, which in my case is um, a RAR file, um, it just compresses all the files into a pack and then you just extract it to get all the contents of that pack out. It just saves space uh, when uploaders are uploading. So I'm gonna just make this a really simple installation. I'm gonna drag this um, RAR file onto my desktop, but I'm going to just right click and to new to new folder, and I'm going to name this folder uh, just simply Dolphin. Whoops. And I'm going to drag this uh, RAR file into the Dolphin folder, open the Dolphin folder I've just created, right click. If I go to Rim RAR and extract here, this will unzip or extract all the contents like I was just saying so just delete this uh, RAR file now when RAR archive we no longer need that and if I open up the Dolphin folder we will have lots of files in here so your applications are the ones which opens up the program you also got some text documents in here which will give you a little background information on what this release is going to have incorporated in it uh, that type of thing. So if I just double left click on Dolphin, this will open it up. Uh, so your first prompt is gonna be, uh, do you want to report information to Dolphin's developers? Um, you know, if you get any problems, uh, that information will be passed on to make bugs, that type of thing, obliterated uh, with later uh, packages, versions of Dolphin. So I'm gonna just put no for now, so that's entirely optional. So first things first is that you need to find 
uh, your own games. So we're talking GameCube games and Wii games. So as you can see on screen here in the center, uh, is specifically looking for GameCube and Wii ISOs. Uh, ISOs are literally a disc which has been made into an image format uh, readable by computers rather than physically putting a disc into your machine. So uh, I'm not going to say where you can get your ISOs from, uh, just a simple Google search. Um, so before I go any further on this, let me just tell you that a massive benefit for something like Dolphin uh, emulating GameCube or Wii games uh, well, the things which will benefit a lot of people you can't do on the original hardware is the obvious screen resolutions. So GameCube and Wii, I think, was running at 480p, 480i in it released. Uh, whereas an uh, emulator such as Dolphin will, I'm pretty sure, uh, go up to around 8k. So you're going to get smoother textures. You've also got anti-aliasing options to make those jagged edges disappear to essentially make these old games look fairly new. So, once you have got your GameCube and Wii ISOs, and forget about the WADS part just here, we need to uh, set the games directory where Dolphin is going to see your games that you have. So, I'm going to just go ahead and find my directory where my uh, GameCube games are stored. So once you find your uh, directory, uh, it will then load up your games in sequence, alphabetical or uh, numerical order. Um, I own all these games and the purpose I'm using this today is as I was saying, as a retro collector and enthusiast of that type of thing, I like to play these old games in the best possible resolution with the options of using filters, that type of thing, to make games how I want them to look. So. You can easily just now double left click on a game of your choice which you own. So I'm going to just go to Auto Modelista, double left click on that. And if you've got a decent system running this on, you will likely get good performance to begin with right from boot. However, I recommend at least a system with a 10th or 11th processor or even 5th to 6th generation processor such as an i5 6500 uh, CPU will run these really well and remember um, most emulators including this one are very reliant on your CPU uh, so you need to ensure that you have got a decent capable CPU and also a fairly good graphics card I recommend a GPU uh, with at least two or even four gigabyte of video RAM. So if I just go here, I'm using my keyboard for now to see how this performance is going to act. So everything seems to be running just fine from the get go Warning. with Auto Modelista. And, uh, yeah, this game actually, it's a very, very good game. So I'm also going to show you in this tutorial about another benefit of running something like Dolphin. So I don't think I'm going to go into this game much, as you can see it's running very smoothly if this records properly. So if you have got an older system, a, a desktop or a laptop, and you're suffering lagging issues, that type of thing, I'm going to show you in a sec how to resolve those issues. So uh, yeah, if you double left click on the screen, whoops, on this max noise button, you'll get a full screen. Um, actually, I think it's one of the left buttons to make this entirely full screen. So as you can see, performance on this just get me on my system is superb. So I'm going to shut this down and go on to show you uh, something you might not be aware of. If we go down to our search bar for your Windows system, this will work on Windows 10, I'm using Windows 11. If we just search system information, left click on it and it will tell you the hardware you've got. So as you can see here, under processor, I've got 11th gen i7 processor. 
uh, or four cores. It'll also tell you other information about which GPU you're using. I'm personally using an RTX uh, with my gaming laptop. So, if you're struggling with uh, stuttering that type of thing, which is quite common on older computers, um, if you're running something like a GT GPU, uh, you might suffer some of those problems. Uh, I think GTX onwards, you're going to be a little bit more acceptable of getting a better performance. But nevertheless, if we go to configuration tab here, uh, the one you need to look for is whoops wrong one if we just go to graphics tab left click on it under here uh, you'll see really important options for your system hardware so i recommend just leaving this uh, backend option on opengl uh, some games which won't boot you might need to change the vulcan or a directx uh, 11 or 12 personally i'd recommend directx 12 it's the latest directx version out so I'm going to leave that on OpenGL, but if you suffer performance issues, then it's worth looking at your back end. Uh, you also got aspect ratio. Uh, I would personally stick with 16 by 9, which is kind of like a widescreen format. Or if you want more of the old school uh, look, then go by 4.3, which is more of a box ratio. But I'm going to just put mine on 4.69. Uh, now we've got other options here, so we've got V-Sync, which is unchecked. Uh, if you're unaware of what V-Sync is, it means um, that screen tear. So when games are moving, you might often see the uh, screen tear, almost as it were. So if you check V-Sync, that will uh, just eliminate um, that from happening. Uh, you also want to put start in full screen. And you've got lots of other options here, you've got enhancements. Now, um, the game was running just now, that's running at a native 6 4 by 528 um, As I was saying, Dolphin will go up to what I said back then was 8K. Um, it's actually going up to 5K. So, um, progress and eventually it will likely run at 8K without a doubt. I'm going to just uh, put mine at a 720p for now. Um, anti aliasing Alazen. Um, I'm going to put this on a modest 4x MSAA. Uh, the higher up you go, the more your system might lag if you've got underpowered system. I find the sweet spot is around 2 times to 4 times MSAA. Uh, you also got texture filtering. So um, this is kind of similar to anti-aliasing, but not quite. But again, I'm going to just stick this to around 2 times anastrophic. And we've also got post-processing effects, so this is filters. So you could have a 16-bit filter where you're going to get limited colors in your games. Uh, you've probably got CRT monitor filters there, but I don't particularly like them too much, so I'm going to just leave it to off. Um, you've also got different options here for hacks, that type of thing, if you've got mods for your games. But everything's looking okay, it's the visuals I'm interested in showing you at the moment. Now, another benefit from something like Dolphin is your choice of controllers. So right here, I'm using a PlayStation 3 uh, six axis controller, which works perfectly well. So to set up your controller for GameCube, uh, if you just click on the controllers tab at the top, if you go to uh, GameCube controllers for this tutorial, I'm looking at GameCube. We just want to select standard controller for GameCube. We then go into configure. And if we go to the voice, you will see uh, we have two options here. It's X input or the Xbox 360 controller for Windows. If I just select that one, uh, PlayStation 3 controllers need uh, specific software to set these up, whereas an Xbox controller doesn't necessarily. So I'm going to just configure this. So we want to uh, click on the buttons here. So remember, this is emulating a GameCube cube controller so if i uh left click on the x button here and press my own button on the controller you'll see it says button a so this is how you configure your buttons to match the gamecube controllers so that's pretty much it uh, you know, another example is to start which i'm going to just use start on my controller and you've got d-pad all the same thing so 
down I'm gonna press down on the d-pad left I'm gonna press left on the d-pad on my controller right right on the d-pad and now we got ca calibrate it, um, options for the control stick and the C stick uh, from the GameCube so if I just calibrate that So those are your options for emulating a GameCube controller. Uh, the Wii side of setting up a controller, um, you can actually use a controller like this to play most Wii games, uh, but that's a separate tutorial and it's a little bit tedious, that one, but that's the basics for setting up a controller uh, for GameCube games. So if I just close this down now, and if I go back to say Auto Model Lester, Open it up, we should now have 16 by 9 full screen with enhanced uh, resolution like I just selected. So just double left click and here we go. Warning! Capcom! This isn't going to record properly, um, then I can assure you this is running fluidly and very smoothly. Uh, we're probably up to say 60 FPS, so running very well, but like I said, it's really down to uh, your hardware, what you're running. Uh, like I said, my uh, GPU is an RTX, and I'm running an i7 11th uh, CPU processor with 16 gigabyte of uh, DDR4 or DDR5 RAM, I think I've got on my laptop. Check it out! Here we go. So again, if it's not coming through too clearly, I can assure you this looks superb. I've got this linked up to my TV via HDMI, and it's run flawlessly, uh, being controlled with my PS3 controller. So that's about it for this tutorial. Um, I think I'm going to make a separate tutorial for the Wii Cyber uh, Dolphin. But if you've not checked out my other tutorials, check them out, subscribe. So as you can appreciate, that looks really good by itself, but you can further boost this visually. So to do this, all you're going to do is go to the graphics tab at the top. Just left click on that. Now I suggest you leave the back ends as OpenGL. This is um, also offering this to you if you're unsure which back end to go for. Back ends means what's going to support the visuals on it. So a back ends could be your graphics card, but it's just saying open GL. So let's leave it on there. And for best results, I've always had open GL or Vulcan, but generally open GL is the best one to have. So next thing you're going to want to do is the aspect ratio, which speaks for itself. Traditionally, the GameCube games were released in the 4x3 box format. You can put this to 169, like the full screen. Things look stretched. So that's entirely up to you, but you can click on different options here if you want the traditional old school look or you have 16 by nine. I'm gonna go for 16 by nine. Make sure V-Sync is on. So V-Sync of course is to eliminate screen tear. So always keep that one checked and that's not gonna be taking up much resource with your hardware you're using. And I've also checked start in full screen. So again, to exit full screen, as you know now, uh, press escape and that will exit. Next part you want to be going to is enhancements. And this is where things are gonna take the turn for the best. So if we go to internal resolution, we can go up to 5K here. So that's entirely up to you. And I can't do it on this tutorial, running 4K whilst using this software I'm using for this video is gonna kill my laptop. It shouldn't do, but it does. So for this, I'm gonna just go to three times, which is 1080p, which is fine. But if your hardware can support it, 
and I recommend you at least have around 16 gigabyte of RAM and a really chunky graphics card GPU uh, to really crank up those settings to get the best results. So yeah, I'm gonna just go to three times native. And under anti-aliasing, again, that's really down to your hardware. Uh, you can look on the Dolphin website and you can see their requirements for getting the best settings. For this, I'm gonna just go very basic, hence uh, what I just said about making this video. So two times MSAA, and obviously the further up you go down to double S, double A times eight, that's gonna be really taking a hit out of your hardware. So for this, I'm gonna just select two times. So texture filtering, again, that relies on your hardware. So for this, I'm actually gonna just go to two times anastrophic. Uh, the further up you go, like 16 times, that's going to really be taking a bite out of your hardware. So uh, be aware of that. If you find you're going up and you're getting laggy performance, then that would be the reason why it's mainly under the en enhancements. Uh, that's where your hardware is hit most. So what I normally do to test these uh, emulators I do, I'll beef it up. I'll go right to the max and then I'll work my way down. And that's a long process in itself. So Good luck with you on that. So, two times. Now, you've also got a post-processing effect here, which is, in essence, a filter. So, you can choose for your GameCube games to have that 16-bit look, which is Mega Drive Super Nintendo look. Some of you out there might be interested in that. It don't appeal to me, so I'm going to leave this one as off. So, if you then go over to the Advanced tab, uh, you've got different hot options here. Uh, for those of you testing for the first time, you're going to want to check show FPS. Some of you is going to like 60, some is going to like 120 FPS. So you can enable that to show you how much it's running at. So obviously that's frames per second, and the more frames per second, the better. So that's entirely up to you if you want to check this one. But for now, this is done. So let's test this now without adding the HD texture pack. So we double left click on Mario Kart. So I'm just going to go to standard uh, game setup on this just for this tutorial. So if this is coming out on your end watching this, uh, you'll see more of an improvement. You'll see just a better range of colours and sharpness. But like I say, if you've got a capable computer or laptop, then bump this up to 4K. Um, I can do this myself, but not whilst filming this video. So. So like I say, just keep a look on that road, and this is one of the noticeable differences you're going to see when I add the texture pack, and you are going to be amazed. So let's exit by pressing escape key. Okay, so for this next part, adding the texture pack, the link is in my description to download it for yourself. So let's just go ahead and download. So the link is going to take you to this website. Now, uh, depending on the region of the world you're in, for example, I got an American copy of the Mario Kart game I had imported. Um, I'm gonna to go to the NTSC and I'm gonna download that through its mega website. Or if you're in Britain and you got a British copy of Mario Kart, double dash, then you just download the PAL version. So you download through the link and you simply just download and I'm going to press save and here we go so that was very quick so next thing you're going to need to do with this texture pack is just simply open it up and you'll find the folder so this is saying gm4e01 now this needs to match with the name on your game on the ISO so if we go back to Dolphin if we right click on the Mario Kart game, if I go to properties, and if I then go to info, game ID says GM4E01, which is the same as what we got as the download of the texture pack, what we've just got. So 
it's all ready to go. So open up uh, again this folder you just downloaded until you get to this part where you will have seven folders inside. Okay, so let's just close this one down what I've just gone into. And I'm going to close Dolphin down for this. Okay, so once you are back into where your emulator is installed, I'm going to find a folder and this one is called user. I'm going to just left click on user and there's a little folder here called load. You go inside load and then once more we go into textures and this is where your HD textures for your game or games are going to be put into. So we then back out of here and this is the one we just downloaded for Mario Kart. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just drag this folder and you need to drag the folder which is, says GM4E01 and I'm going to just drag this into the user load textures folder. So this might take a little while, some of these texture packs are fairly big. Okay, so once that's installed, or rather that's just dragged into the user load textures folder, let's check this out. And there's one last thing we need to do to enable the textures. Just back out of here. And next thing we're going to want to do is obviously open up Dolphin again. So yeah, there's a hell of a lot you've got to do to get this one working, but trust me, it's worth your while doing it if you love visuals and you love GameCube. So here we go, so we are back in here. Okay, so to enable HD textures, all we're going to do is go to graphics. And if we just go along to advanced, and make sure load custom textures is checked. And this is what's gonna load your texture, so make sure that one's checked and close out of here. Let's open Mario Kart Double Dash again. Let's see if this is showing us that road which I was mentioning. Now this might appear to be laggy for this video, which it is. As like I said, I've got a lot going on just here. So the point of this video is to show the road. Now if we check out the road, for example, now, and the textures around it, look at that. You can tell a difference, and it looks really good. So yeah, very laggy for this video since I'm recording at the same time, but there's a dramatic improvement in visuals and you can notice this just by the road alone. So that's about it for this tutorial. So in this tutorial I've showed you how to set up Dolphin, I've showed you how to add a game, I've showed you how to mess with your video settings, showed you how to do a couple of other things and I've also showed you how to add HD texture packs. So HD texture packs for GameCube games, they're a little bit scattered over the internet, but it's the same process. Uh, you need to match your game ID, which I showed you by right-clicking on your game icon. Just go to properties, and if you check out which game code you've got, which is under info, uh, you just match this up with the HD texture pack download. Same process, you go into the folders, So that's it. Uh, check out my other tutorials on emulation. I'm always uploading these videos. And next time, take care.